a very different one of the mysteries that are in this teaching thing that, it, that I'll share a little bit of it. But this is the, the reality of God, but also the reality of the enemy. What the Bible says is true. The enemy is real. The Lord is real. And also linked to the end times, but I'll give a little bit of it. Now, in, in the, time of, the time of ancient Israel, there was always this war of gods. There, there was always Baal. You had, ba you had God, the true God, and then you had Baal. That's right. And Baal was the substitute God. Baal was, we were just talking yeah. about, he was God of prosperity and all the... And on the high places of Israel, you had Baal. You had the Baal worship, the Baal altars, and all, the, all those things going on. Later on, you have another war of gods. You have, in the time of the Maccabees, the Hanukkah, you have Antiochus, this horrible king, who comes into Israel, and he sets an altar, he sets an abomination on the Temple Mount. This is where we get the abomination desolation. Uh -huh. this, is, this is the foreshadow. This is first called the abomination desolation. And then Jesus, Messiah, refers to it when he talks about what will happen. So in a sense, this is a shadow of what's going to happen later. You know, the whole Hanukkah picture. So you have Antiochus. He defiles the Temple Mount. He desecrates God's sanctuary. He slaughters a pig. And then he sets up this abomination, which is a shadow of what's coming. What was the abomination? Well, we know the abomination, it was an idol. And it was an idol of the god Zeus. Okay, The idol of the god Zeus, the chief of the, of the Greek gods. And he, he set it up, we just talked about the altar being restored. He set it up on the altar. The Maccabees, finally they win, they get back the temple, they cleanse the temple, they take away the idol, they cleanse it all. Hmm. But there's something deeper going on in this war. Mm -hmm. And this goes to the end times ultimately. But for, you have the god Baal, that was the, we mentioned. Baal in Babylonian becomes Bel. Bel becomes Belos. Belos is linked to Zeus. It's, in other words, these are just like masks of the same principality. Now something else happens. When the Maccabees win that war and they take down that altar of Zeus and they cleanse the temple, it's almost like Satan comes back. And at what, what, the same time when they take that, that, that abomination off the temple, he causes another altar of Zeus to go up in the ancient world. This, it's what was on the Temple Mount, but now it's a mag gigantic altar of Zeus. And where was it? It was in the, it was in the, the place called Pergamon. 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 A gigantic altar of Zeus on Pergamon. Now, when you read the book of Revelation, and it, re you spe and it speaks about Pergamon, and when it, you read in, in Revelation, it says, Pergamon, the place of the throne of Satan. Oh. When it talks about the throne of Satan, it's Pergamon. Why? Because in Pergamon you have this gigantic pagan altar, the altar of Zeus, which is, the, is part of this war going on, continuously going on. Now, here's the thing. You have, you have, this, you have this war. What happened, what happened to that altar? What happened to the throne of Satan? This was there, you know, the, the Greeks were in charge of it first, and they were the ones at that time that were persecuting Israel in the days of Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. Then the Romans took over, and then they destroyed the temple. They come against the Jewish people. They come against the gospel, the throne of Satan. But what happens is then the gospel starts spreading to the Roman Empire, and people start turning away from the gods and the altars. So the altar of Zeus or a Pergamon, the altar of Pergamon or the throne of Satan starts falling into disrepair. It starts kind of becoming underground. It will stay that way, dormant, until the modern age, until our time. As, the, as, as we watch, as the world, as Europe, and, what, and they start throwing off the gospel, becomes they start, you know, in Europe especially, what happens is a man comes to Pergamon in the, at the end of the 19th century, and, and he, he starts uncovering the altar or the throne of Satan. And he sends the pieces of the altar the first piece is back to his homeland. The year is 1871, the beginning of the unearthing of the throne. Then this, and this links back to the abomination desolation. All that. So here he does that. The same year, 18, you know, now the enemy hates the Jewish people. We know that. Yes. He's furious to destroy the Jewish people. Absolutely. Well, this 1871, when the first pieces are unearthed of the throne of Satan, that 1871 marks the same year that anti-Semitism begins in the world. It, the birth of the hate, the modern hatred of the Jewish people starts as the throne of Satan is being revived. It's going, and the place it starts, anti-Semitism, is the land of Germany. 
Germany is born, people don't, Germany becomes a nation in the year 1871, the same, the same year oh. as anti-Semitism is born, the same year of the altar of the throne of Satan, and, and where, where did those pieces go? The man who uncovered, started uncovering the throne of Satan was German. He sends the pieces back to Germany. They start, re, they start digging up the altar, a big excavation in the year 1878. They, send, they, put all the, they transport the entire altar, the throne of Satan, to Germany. Germ, they, Germany, they start reconstructing the altar. They start they, this gigantic altar of Pergamon, they, the throne of Satan in Berlin. Now they finish it in the year 1889. 1889, a baby is born in a German la Germanic, Germanic bordering land. The baby is Adolf Hitler. Oh, when oh. the throne of Satan reappears in the world, Adolf Hitler appears in the world. Same year, same time. And, and the, the next part is going to be linked to this, this life, Adolf Hitler and this altar in Berlin coming together. When they come together, something's going to happen. So what happens now is they start building in Germany, they start building a big like monument, like a, a museum to house the, to house the, the altar, but it's, it's inadequate. So in the year 1910, they start a massive, uh, massive building to, to house the, the, basically the throne of Satan, which is the altar of Pergamon. The Bible says it. So, so, here's, so they're doing this there, and, and as they're doing this, Germany, Berlin, that's where the altar the throne of Satan is, as they do this, the greatest calamity in human history up to that day comes upon the world of destruction. World War I comes upon, based on Berlin, where the, alt, where the throne of Satan is. So this massive tens, I mean, I mean, millions and millions of people are destroyed in, in, this, in this massive thing. The throne of Satan's in Berlin. They keep building this, 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 uh, this house to house the throne, Finally, they're finished in the year 1930. They open up the altar of Pergamon in Berlin. They open it up for people, people, people coming from all over, multitudes of Germans coming. 1930 is a turning point year. That same year, there's an election, and the Nazi party goes from the smallest party in Germany to the number two party in Germany. It's their, it's their big victory the same year as the altar. It's only going to be a matter of time before they take over Germany now. And what happens is, so by 19, 1933 and 34, Hitler becomes the dictator of Germany. And here in the sentence, so now Hitler is in Berlin, the, the city of the throne of Satan. They are to all come together. Now one of the first things that Hitler does is he says, I want a pedestal. He wants a pedestal. He wants a, a, a stage that he will speak to the world and he'll, he'll say, you know, he'll do what he's going to do. So he commissions, it's going to be in Nuremberg. Nuremberg is where they have all the big, massive Nazi rallies. And Hitler there is going to speak. He commissions an architect to build him his pedestal to speak to the world in Germany. The, the architect is Albert Speer. Albert Speer visited the altar of Satan in Berlin. And when Hitler asked him to build Hitler a pedestal, he builds it based on the throne of Satan. Wow. Oh. So the Nazis, not only now, now you have, now, now in the days of Antiochus, and I'm just going to share a little, a little bit of this, but the days of Antiochus, when Antiochus set up that altar of Zeus on the Temple Mount, it's really Satan doing it, he, wa he, he was doing it to paganize Israel. He wanted Israel to become pagan. He starts a war against the Jews, starts persecuting them, burning the Bible, and killing them. A war against the Jews is linked to that altar, of, that altar there. Well, well, it didn't paganize Israel because they, they revolted. But now that altar, that pagan altar is in Germany, and Germany is going to become a pagan nation with that altar there. That demonic altar, Germany is going to become a demonic nation, I mean, at the time of Hitler. So here they build Hitler this gigantic, um, gigantic, colossal version of the altar of Pergamon in Nuremberg. And it's, it's basically the throne of wow. Satan. So every time you see, when you see Hitler speaking in these, those massive things, he's standing on the altar of Zeus, He's standing on the altar of Pergamon, the, reaper, the gigantic reaper. He's standing on the throne of Satan, literally. The throne is where, you, where, where a king speaks. Well, this is the throne of Satan. Through Hitler, 
It's the enemy speaking to the world. Yes. And the enemy hates Israel, wants to destroy the Jewish people with all his might to wipe because if he can destroy them, he can stop God's plan. That's, that's what it's all about. So what, it, what happens is it's in Nuremberg on the throne of Satan when Hitler speaks. That's, from that city come the Nuremberg Laws. The Nuremberg Laws are the beginning of the Holocaust from the same city of the throne of Satan. And the first time the word final solution will ever be uttered publicly will be by Hitler in Nuremberg on the days when he's speaking on the throne of Satan. That's where the Holocaust begins. It is the state. Now, there is so much to this. I'm only going to share this much now. There is so much to this. But the, the point is, God is real. The enemy is real. And that we're in a real fight, mm -hmm. a real warfare. And this is even linked to the abomination, desolation, which is coming on the world, the spirit of Antichrist. This is, in fact, this altar, we talk about things affecting, this thing has been affecting world history from that time, even up to the Cold War, up till now. I'll, I'll, share, I'll share more you know, later or another time. But the, but the point here is this. We are in a real war, and we have to know that. There yeah. is an enemy. Every believer has an enemy here. And the thing is, the enemy comes in like a flood, but the thing is that in the end days, he is furious with Israel, and he's furious with the people of God. That's why he's going for us. But the thing is that it's a good thing to have the enemy as your enemy, because it means you have the friend as your friend. <laughs> if, if the enemy is, is coming against you and you're in God's will, be encouraged, be strong, mm -hmm. be, 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 be more encouraged, because it means that's how great the purposes of God are. You know, the enemy tried to wipe out the Jewish people. When? just before they were about to be resurrected and all prophecy was to come true and Israel was to become a nation. So the more the enemy comes against, it means that there's something good coming, something big coming. Wow. But we have to be strong and greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Yes. True, we are on the winning side. But we're in a fight. And we, and, and we are on the winning side. So, so yeah. It, it just seems like the whole world is again focused against yeah. Israel. On Israel and anti Semitism yeah. is all over yeah. the world. It's against Israel and it's against Christians. Yeah. At the same time, it's all coming together. The same time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and how do you explain the hatred of Israel? It makes no sense. Why is Israel this little New Jersey sized country, you know, that has a, the only one that has democracy, that makes the desert bloom, instead of condemning those that are killing millions of their people, the world hates this one little. Why? It's yeah. satanic, it's yes. not natural, it's right. supernatural, it's, but it shows you that's the greatness of, the, of what God has on the nation of Israel because that's the nation that Jesus is coming to. That's the nation that the kingdom is coming to. That's the nation that is going to rule the world when Jesus sits on the throne. Yeah. So it, this, is, this is why the enemy hates it so much. But, but it's a good sign. When the enemy hates you, it's a good sign. You want to be in the center of God's will and you want to be in the center of the enemy's hate. You know, it's a good yeah. sign. It's a good <laughs> sign. It's good. You, yeah. yeah. I couldn't help but think of the word that says... Don't give place to Satan. Yes, exactly. Yeah, give no room to, to, to give him, and then go, no bitter root. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because it, Germany it, gave place to the throne of that's, Satan. That's exactly it. And, and that root grew right that's there. That's exactly it. They gave place, and, one, and, and the enemy, just like sin. It's sin, you know, sin is never content to take a little spot. It's, it's either all or nothing. You give sin a little room, it's going to take the whole thing. You, you watch what happened to America. Give a little bit, a little bit, take prayer out, take this out, look where we are now. And that's true in our lives. So we have to, we as individual you know, believers, we can't play around with sin. sin you know, you know, it says that, Peter says, that it wars against your own soul, these lusts. So right. don't play around with sin. It's trying to kill you. It's trying to, the enemy has only Absolutely. one aim, one aim, and that's to destroy you. But, you know, so, but at the, the, you know, the good news is that after all that an enemy has done, and there's much more to share, but I, and I'll, I think before I leave here, there's another thing I'll, that, that the enemy has actually put on the Temple Mount that is gigantic, but, I'll, I'll, but, but and that has to do with what's, what's, what's coming. But the ultimate thing is remember, throughout all this, trying to wipe out, you know, for 2,000 years, 4,000 years, mm -hmm. that all hell has been trying to wipe out the little Jewish people. All hell, every empire, all it. And yet here we are in the year 2015 and all those empires are gone but the nation of Israel lives because the God of Israel lives. Amen. Because Amen. God wins, we win, Amen. Messiah wins, God is on the throne. We just have to stand. It says stand, you know, fight the good fight.